Okay, let's get started. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us for this webinar. My name is Jesse Bly. I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. Take a second to jot down my email. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you would like a Sky Safari brochure, um, digital information, or if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. It's just jesse at emergingdestinations.com. Um, before I start our webinar on the marvelous Maasai Mara, one that I'm very excited about today, I just wanted to touch on the Emerging Destinations portfolio. So we represent cool companies in cool places, and we have the pleasure of representing uh, Kelly and Peacock Safaris in Kenya and Tanzania, and you'll hear from Kath in just a moment. Uh, we also represent their sister companies, the Elowana Collection in Kenya and Tanzania, as well as Sky Safari by the Elowana Collection in Kenya and Tanzania. We've also got Eco Training in South Africa and Adventure Consults in Uganda and Rwanda. Our South America portfolio consists of Terra Nova Tours in Costa Rica. We also represent the Guyana Tourism Authority. Then we've got Hotel Las Torres and Fantastico Sur in Torres del Paine National Park in Patagonia. We've got Cruz Andina, which is the famous lake crossing in Patagonia. Then we have Jungle Experiences, which is on the Peruvian Amazon. And then we also have Grand Hotel Lux in Argentina and Uruguay. Our polar portfolio consists of Adventure Canada and Iceland Pro Cruises and Iceland Pro Travel. So we're really proud to represent uh, these companies. They're all um, adventure-based travel, so we, we love our portfolio. So if you have any questions about any of these companies, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to dive deep into any one of these companies. You can also visit our website, uh, emergingdestinations.com. We've got a webinar for every single one of these clients that you see here. So um, if you'd like to uh, get a taste for any of them, head over to the Emerging Destinations website. So today we are talking about the marvelous Maasai Mara, and it is one of Kenya's most um, iconic destinations. So we're really excited to take you through uh, the Maasai Mara in Kenya. Uh, before I turn everything over to Kath, I just wanted to give you um, some few notes for GoToWebinar. Please ask as many questions um, as you'd like through the GoToWebinar control panel. You can type those through. I have Kath joining us all the way from Nairobi, and I've asked her to... Uh, grab a glass of wine and stay up late. Um, so we'll have her on for some questions. So please make sure that you type those through and I'll get her to answer those at the end of the webinar. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded. So if you've jumped in late or you need to jump out early, please don't worry. Um, I will be sending this recording most likely um, tomorrow, next week at the latest. So um, please sit back, relax and enjoy the marvelous Maasai Mara. Uh, thanks so much, Jesse, and hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar on the Maasai Mara and the surrounding conservancies. Just a small bit about Kelly and Peacock before we begin. Um, we are actually 35 years old this year. We are a destination management company with offices in Nairobi and in Arusha. We operate safaris in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda. Um, in Kenya, we do flying safaris. In Tanzania, we have our own road fleet, so we can do road and flying. Uganda and Rwanda is a mixture of both as well. That is me. Um, I am the product manager for Kelly and Peacock. I have a fantastic job, and when we are not struck with the pandemic, I'm usually traveling around East Africa, experiencing all of the lodges and safari destinations to make sure that they are perfect, basically. Um, and that is me jumping with a Maasai. I was promised a free husband, which I never received. <laughs> Those are my contact details. If you want to get in touch with me at any time, I am available and happy to answer any questions for you. So the Maasai Mara, um, it is in the southwestern corner of Kenya. As you can see there, it does border the it borders Tanzania, the, it makes up the Mara Serengeti ecosystem. Um, the wildlife concentration in the Mara is incredible. Uh, it has beautiful scenery. The conservation success stories, we'll, you'll hear about them later, are amazing. And basically, it is safari as it is always imagined. 
Um, the reserve, the Masai Mara National Reserve is quite a small wildlife area in comparison to most other places in Kenya. It's uh, 1,500 square kilometers, but it is surrounded by numerous conservancies which are privately owned in partnership with the local community. Um, these conservancies are absolutely incredible. This land is owned by the local Maasai people, but it is rented to the conservancies for use for ecotourism. Um, the entire area of the Mara with the conservancies has substantially increased the Serengeti Mara ecosystem, which is uh, incredible for wildlife conservation, and it also provides sustainable income for the local Maasai landowners. In this webinar, I'll be talking about the Maasai Mara National Reserve and four of the mainly, the mostly visited conservancies, which is Mara North, Olare Motorogi, Naboisho, and Older Kesi conservancies. So I'm just going to go straight into what everyone knows about the Mara, which is the migration. Basically, the Mara Reserve is intersected by two main rivers, which is the Mara and the Talek, which is where these renowned wildlife crossings do occur. Um, the annual migration is of over 1.3 million wildebeest and zebra, and they move generally in a clockwise, clockwise direction in a cycle that depends on rainfall and pastures. It's really important that while we do know the movement sort of because it's dependent on ra on um, rainfall and pastures there is no guarantee of seeing the migration or crossings so that is very important to tell guests before they come out um, in general the migration does come into the mara between june and october so the wildebeest and the zebra cross the mara river in tanzania move in to the reserve um, and then there is no actual fixed route within the Mara. Usually, they uh, large herds move north into the western area of the reserve called the Mara Triangle, and then they continue to cross the Mara and Talek rivers on their journey north and east into the numerous conservancies. The migration is an incredible spectacle to see. It is beautiful, um, regardless of the river crossings, just being amongst the herds is sensational the noise the smell obviously the predators that follow these animals it's it's incredible um as you can see there but also something to note because of the migration there are a lot of tourist numbers that come into the reserve to see these crossings so sadly that sometimes <laughs> is what you see there are lots of vehicles obviously um with the correct guides and the correct timing and all of that you can get less vehicle numbers um but you will see vehicles at crossings we do choose smaller properties in in the Masai Mara to use in within the reserve in exclusive areas so you it does lessen the amount of vehicles that you will see but we would suggest uh staying in the conservancies. I will speak about it later. Lots of them have access to the reserve, so you can come in, do a full day game drive, go and see a crossing uh, if, if that's your main goal, and then go back to the conservancy for the exclusivity. Uh, as I mentioned, the herds do make it up into the conservancy, so you will see the herds. Um, it's all about timing. So like starting with the Masai Mara National Reserve, I did mention it is quite small. Um, it, it consists of rolling hills and grass plains. The southeast of the reserve is uh, along the border of Tanzania. You'll see there the Serengeti. And then on the east, it's the Loiter Hills. And then on the west is the Ololo Escarpment, which is up there where Angama Mara is situated. The reserve is home to a huge amount of resident and transient game. Um, it has unrivaled game viewing throughout the year, regardless of when the migration is there or not and over 450 species of bird. Um, and the Maasai people in the area are incredible. They are uh, close relatives of the Samburu, so they are quite similar, but they also have their own traditions. And as you can see, their different clothing. Um, and then obviously the, the famous Maasai jumping. I have split this up into a different view for the reserve as there are numerous airstrips within it. So basically, you're dealing with five main airstrips within the reserve and um, the one that you would use for your guests would be dependent on their accommodation. 
Um, as you can see there, I've highlighted the, the five main strips. So uh, scheduled daily flights come into all of these strips and they come in from Nairobi, Lewa, Loisaba, Naivasha, Nanyuki, Meru, and Diani. So wherever your guests are, connecting to the Mara is, is very, very easy. You can also get charter flights and road transfers from Nairobi are about five to six hours. But as I mentioned, um, we promote flying safaris in Kenya, just due to the um, sometimes the condition of the road after the rains and just the length of time it takes to get to the destination. Um, if you're looking at connecting the Mara onto something else, obviously with charter flights, you can go anywhere, but with scheduled flights uh, coming out, they do the normal flights back from the Mara into Nairobi, but you can also get direct flights to the Kenyan coast. Um, these sometimes are routed via Wilson, but during peak season, they are direct. You can also link with Tanzania via Megori, which is uh, the, on the border of Kenya-Tanzania. You fly to Megori from your airstrip in the Mara, and then there is a road transfer. You're escorted and assisted through the border. And then you board your connecting plane in Tarime, which is on the Tanzania side, and then fly to your Tanzanian destination. You can also combine the Mara with Entebbe. Uh, there are flights directly out of the Mara via Kisumu, which is a small town in, well, actually, it's a city now, but <laughs> in um, in Kenya. And then you connect straight through to Entebbe, and then you can go and trek gorillas. Activities within the reserve, as it is a national reserve, um, you're limited to day game drives and on-roading. Um, you can also do the iconic hot air balloon safaris in the Mara, um, an early rise. You go out and watch the sunrise and fly over the plains, and then you land and have a, a beautiful bush breakfast. And then the standard safari activities, sundowners, beautiful bush breakfasts. Um, they set them up sometimes on dry riverbeds or in the forests, they're beautiful. Some camps have spa treatments, um, extensive children's activities, those will be within the campgrounds, and then also cultural community visits. Um, the Mara, obviously best for the migration, it's photographer's paradise um, and families as well. Within the reserve, um, there are a large amount of accommodation suppliers, but as I mentioned, we do choose those that are smaller, more in intimate, and provide an exclusive safari experience. So we've got Salas Camp and Eloana Sand River, Masai Mara, which are along the Sand River um, on the border between the Serengeti and the Mara. Beautiful views, very exclusive area, um, a lot less game, I mean, a lot less uh, vehicle traffic down there, plenty of game. Um, we've also got Rikero Camp in the middle of the reserve, Governors Il Moran, um, and Little Governors at the, in the Mara Triangle, and then Angama Mara, and beyond Kichwa Tembo, and, and beyond Batalur Camp are in the top left of the reserve. They do sit just outside the reserve, but all game drives are done within the reserve, um, so you do have access to the reserve. Uh, the camps bordering the National Reserve, so Angama, Kitra Tembo, and Basila, do offer additional activities that aren't limited because of their location within the reserve. Angama Mara has some sensational activities. You can run with a Maasai, you can <laughs> visit, it's just, uh, they do beautiful sundowners and uh, Maasai warrior dances, and also the iconic views from, from the movie Out of Africa. So, um, yeah. Fantastic. Then um, it is important to note that National Reserve is very busy between end of June, July through to October. It's the same uh, peak safari season in Kenya, but because of the migration, the numbers are quite high during that time. Moving on to Mara North. Uh, Mara North was founded in 2009 and it is 70,000 acres. It's actually one of the largest community and private sector owned conservancies in the world. It's a really successful uh, conservation story, and uh, it offers exclusive an, ex an exclusive safari experience as it's home to only a handful of camps. Um, they don't let vehicles from the outside come in, so it is limited to those camps and um, very controlled. Uh, they have excellent wildlife, and it is home to the famous Leopard Gorge, which is known as the Big Cat Nursery of the Masai Mara Reserve. Uh, just quickly, with these conservancies, as they are owned by the Maasai, um, they do it, the, cons the conservancy model includes 
grazing rights for the Maasai. So you will at times see cattle on these conservancies. Um, so it's important to let your guests know that. They do also offer an incredible insight into the conservation work and uh, how it is a success between private, uh, between tourism and wildlife and um, and local landowners. So it is insightful for your guests. There you go. That's um, the Mara North. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a conservancy, so guided bush walks, um, stunning bush meals, uh, a lot of freedom uh, with activities within the conservancy. Access is Mara North airstrip for scheduled and charter flights. Um, in the conservancy, you get day and night game drives, guided bush walks. Again, you can do hot air balloon safaris. These are usually done in the reserve, and you drive into the reserve. Um, and you do pay additional park fees. Uh, then you can do cultural community visits, uh, helicopter excursions, incredible fly camping. And in the conservancies, the children's activities are, are more vast than in the reserve. Uh, very, very good for families. Accommodation in Mara North. Uh, that is a picture of Richard's River Camp, one of my per personal favorites. Uh, we also have Seri in the original Ngare Serian. Eluana Elephant Pepper Camp, Suruni Mara, Suruni Wild, and Kicheche Mara. Very small, intimate camps, beautiful safari experiences. Uh, at the Mara North, you do have access into the Mara National Reserve, but again, you do have to pay additional park fees. That, that is applicable to all conservancies. You can do a full game drive into the reserve, but you will have to pay additional fees. Uh, moving on to Olare Motorogi. This was founded in 2006. It's actually comprised of 13,000 hectares of Olare or rock and 5,000 hectares of Motorogi. So that's where it gets its name from. Uh, the community is very highly involved in the conservation of this land. So it does provide excellent community experiences. Um, the camps within the conservancy are limited to 12 tents, which ensures that uh, every tent within the conservancy has at least three square kilometers of game viewing. So it is protecting the wildlife and the safari experience is sensational. Um, it sits north of the Marseille or Mara National Reserve. So the conservancy does have some of the best game viewing in the Mara uh, with plenty of predators and argue, arguably the highest lion densities on earth. Access to this conservancy is Olara Oro Airstrip. Again, scheduled and charter flights. Um, extensive activities due to it being a conservancy um, and it's best for active safaris, who, people who wanna get out of the vehicle, go on a bush walk, um, go and meet the Maasai, try and jump like them, it's difficult. Um, and it's also good for families and couples and multi-generational safaris. Uh, within the reserve, we have some sensational luxury properties, which would be the Great Plains properties, and those are Mara Expedition, Mara Plains, and Mara Nika Camp. We also have Mahale Missouri, which is part of the Virgin Limited Edition camps, and then Kicheche Bush Camp. Uh, again, additional Mara park fees, and the important thing to note with this conservancy is the low visitor density, so you, it is an exclusive experience. Moving on to Naboisho Conservancy. Um, this conservancy is actually home to the largest lion pride in the Mara. It is a 20,000 hectare conservancy of varied terrain with large populations of resident species. There you go. Probably <laughs> makes me want to go there. Um, access to this conservancy is Olseki Airstrip, scheduled and charter flights. Again, extensive activities, including horse riding within this conservancy. So you get out on the plains with the game. It's, uh, it's incredible. Um, again, active safari goers, families, couples, and multi-generational safaris. Our preferred accommodation within this conservancy is Hemingway's Old Seki Mara. Now we are moving down towards the south. Um, this is Old Akesi Conservancy. It is the home of Cotter's 1920s Safari Camp and the Bush Villa. Uh, there are actually only three properties on uh, the conservancy, which is 7,000 acres. So it is very, very exclusive safari experience. Um, 
Two of the properties are the cotters, and then there's an additional property on there. Um, there is The Conservancy borders Tanzania, so it offers unbelievable views over the Mara as well as the Serengeti. And um, it's a very controversial subject of who gets to see the migration first, but the camps along the Sand River and the border of the Serengeti do uh, state claim to that. Um, again, they have fantastic wildlife. They've also just uh, started up the Cotters Conservation Trust, which does extensive uh, conservation work within the Conservancy, and um, those activities are available for guests to go and be a part of. So you can go and see their sniffer dogs and have a sniffer dog experience like those up offered up in Loisaba and Lycipia. And they also have an all-female ranger unit, so that's also an incredible uh, initiative that they've got going there. Access to this conservancy is Cotter's private airstrip. There's, there are scheduled flights that go in there. It's just important to note that those are limited, not limited, they have a, a minimum PAX number. So depending on the airline, um, some are four, some are two. Just check with your safari consultant. They will uh, let you know which, which uh, airline to use. Um, again, it's a conservancy, so day and night game drives, guided bush walks. Stunning uh, cotters, nine, uh, canvas bush baths that they set up on your veranda overlooking the conservancy. Uh, it's very romantic with some champagne. Um, sundowners, bush meals. They do have river fishing and swimming, so it is good for children, but it's important to know that that is seasonal. Um, cotters is renowned for their guides. They have fantastic guides that were all trained by Calvin Cotter himself. He is a gold rated uh, guide in Kenya. There are very few of them. Um, and I believe his uh, guiding partner, Douglas, is also a gold guide. So when you go there, you are guaranteed fantastic guiding. Um, I'd say that this is best for an exclusive safari experience. Families, obviously honeymooners with a canvas bath <laughs> and a spa treatment and multi-generational safaris. The accommodation available is Cotter's 1920 Safari Camp, and then this uh, image here is their Cotter's Bush Villa, which is an exclusive use villa, and it comes with your own staff, your own uh, guide, your own vehicles. You have no interaction with the people staying in, in the safari camp, so it is very exclusive. Um, I've already mentioned the uh, airstrip minimum and max, and that they are renowned for their exceptional guides. An additional part of the Mara experience is uh, horse riding safaris. There are unreal tailor-made safaris that go through uh, the conservancies. You stay in uh, campsites that are set up for you and you ride to each campsite every day. Uh, you go so close to animals, you cross rivers, as you can see there at the bottom with hippos. It's, it's just the most spectacular way to see the wilderness outside of a game vehicle. Any questions for me? All right. Um, we really hope you enjoyed that uh, webinar by Kath. Um, I'm just going to ask Kath to come on. I see that you are there. Kath, thanks so much for staying up late. I do hope that you poured yourself a glass of wine. I do have wine. It sadly is not from Kenya. It's from Argentina. But hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Still great wines in uh, in Argentina, but um, thanks so much for sticking around. We just have a few questions that came through. Um, if any of you have any questions that you forgot to type through while Kath was on, please go ahead and um, type those through so that we can get Kath to answer them. Um, so let's start with the first one. Kath, can you repeat the migration dates in the Mara? Sure. Um, so as I mentioned, the migration is dependent on rainfall and um, the available grass for the animals. So in general, we say June to October is when they're going to be in the Mara. But um, it's really, really important that guests are made aware that this is not a science. <laughs> it is the wild. Um, but yes, from June to October, you will uh, have a chance to see the herds. And it might take an hour it might take a full day game drive but the herds will be in in the vicinity got it um can you go on any walking safaris with a guide um in the masai mara 
within the reserve because it is a national reserve um, and there are a lot of wild animals no you can't um, a lot of camps offer small um, little walks and that is within the the campgrounds and that is uh, more to do with the plants and and the insects of the area um, there are camps that offer walks you can go for, if you're staying within the reserve you can take a short drive to a nearby conservancy and do a walk there but if you are staying within the reserve no walking safaris of like the two hour normal walks within conservancies uh, it's not going to happen within the reserve yeah um i know that some of you are typing through um was the webinar recorded yes i will be sending you a recording so don't worry um this is a great question kath um does the masai mara refer to the people or the area or both <laughs> this is so funny jesse and i had this discussion yesterday yeah. so <laughs> the maasai are the people the maasai mara is the place but when you spell it when you're spelling the people it's m double a s a i when you're spelling the place it's m a s a i so it's one of those horrendous English language tricks that'll get you most of the time. But um, the Maasai Mara is the area. The Maasai are the people. Yeah, great. I, I asked that question yesterday. <laughs> um, this is another good question. Um, are there any horse riding safaris in the Mara? And would there be something available for even expert riders or even beginner um, riders? Do you know? Yeah, so there are varying um, activities that you can do on horseback in the Mara. Um, the ones that I spoke about are tailor-made um, trips uh, between four or seven days that you go. And those are normally for not expert riders, I would say, but the intermediate riders, uh, novice riders, definitely not. Um, but there are also other excursions that you can do for one to two hours that you can ride out onto the plains. That's normally in the Mara Triangle that they do that. Um, or up on the escarpment. Um, so there is something for everyone, but um, extremely novice riders, I would definitely not recommend riding in the Mara. Yeah, great. Um, this is a good question. Are there any issues with border crossings into the Serengeti? Um, is that, does that have to be done um, by air or is it possible to um, do that via vehicle? Can, can you explain the crossing? Okay, sure, no problem. So um, because we promote flying safaris in Kenya, we don't actually have vehicles based in the Mara. So what we do is we partner with our domestic airlines. Um, they've got a very well-established network uh, to uh, enable that border crossing. So you fly from whichever airstrip that you, or your nearest accommodation is uh, to in the Mara, you land at Megori, and then the airline has transportation. You drive across the border. They have representatives that will assist you through uh, immigration. Uh, it's a very se a seamless process crossing from Kenya to Tanzania. And um, the transport is then again provided for the uh, transport from the border crossing to Terime. And then you, you board the flight, your connection flight at Terime to go to wherever you are going to in Tanzania. Perfect. Sounds like a process, but definitely possible. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's actually it's done pretty well. Um, they have uh, great relationships uh, on the border, so everything is is pretty is pretty seamless. Perfect. Um, again, I'm recording this, so if any of you have to go, there's just some really really great questions coming through. Um, uh, in the presentation, you saw, uh, we saw a mix of open and closed vehicles. Are they open on the conservancies yet closed in the reserve? Is it lodge specific? Um, can you elaborate on that? Very good question. <laughs> um, I, do you know it's very lodge specific. They are all open. Um, all of the all of the lodges that I have been to have been open, and we do prefer open vehicles. The most most of the time, if you see closed vehicles in the Mara, it will be vehicles that are coming in on road transfers from um, Nairobi because you can't travel with open vehicles on the main roads. Um, mm -hmm. So the majority of the lodges that we partner with do have open vehicles in the Mara. Uh, the only place that you'll see closed vehicles would be mainly in the Serengeti. Got it. 
Um, a lot of you guys are asking for digital information, such as copy of the presentation images, stuff like that. I will be sending that along. Um, which airline flies from the Mara to Entebbe? Uh, that's Air Kenya. Air Kenya. In partnership with, with their partners in, in, in uh, Uganda. But it's Air Kenya. Got it. Um, <laughs> this one's tricky, <laughs> but uh, maybe you have a good comment. How do you handle um, at a migration crossing having to dodge around all the vehicles? It's kind of a puzzle um, when that happens. So, I mean, any any comment on, on that? It's, it's definitely, I guess, um, a preference of the the guests in the vehicle but do you have just a a comment on that yeah sure i mean it is a very tricky situation i mean of course everyone wants to see a crossing and they are amazing um the lodges that we partner with in the area do have fantastic guides so they'll know when to take you to which crossing point there are numerous crossing points um obviously as i said it is the wilderness so we don't actually we can't tell you when the, the, they'll be there but the guides do have a fantastic network um communicating amongst each other knowing w what's going to be where and the uh, partner properties that we use do do know what is the best time to take people there when there's not going to be a large amount of tourists especially as i mentioned um uh, in areas that are less frequented by tourists these guides are trained to know when to go where to avoid seeing vehicles rather than wildlife so um it, your guide your guide is is your your best asset if i'm being yeah. honest in Mara. for sure um i'll just take one or two more questions um these are i'm really loving all these questions by the way I know, we're getting some really good ones I, I i would love to um answer all of them if i don't get to your question um, when I send the email follow-up, if you just scroll down a little bit, I have a button that says Q&A and Kath actually types out all of the answers to these questions. But I'm just going to ask one or two more on this webinar um, while I have Kath on. So this is a great question, which I um, would love to, for Kath to explain. She does a great job. What is the difference between a conservancy and a private concession? to be perfectly honest that's just wording um okay. so <laughs> in tanzania they're called concessions in in kenya they're called conservancies i mean i could be wrong but this is what i have learned in my experience here but yes in tanzania they're con concessions and in in kenya they're conservancies okay. so it's the same thing it's a partnership between um a private entity and the community that own the land um but they're working towards the same goal. They're working to like together in the conservation of the land. <clears throat> Got it. Oh my gosh, there's still questions coming through, Kath. But this is oh one my god, I'm loving this. This is so fun. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, again, if you guys need to hop off, this is just really um, thanks so much for paying attention and asking all these really great questions. Um, I'll ask Kath a few more because they're really good. Um, this has once come up many times. What do you? What do you? hearing or seeing um the mara opening up you know um it, just with covid i mean i know that's kind of a broad question but what are you what are you hearing what we're hearing so um quite a few of our um partners are planning on reopening um obviously as it is in tanzania tanzania has opened up their borders however because of the limited flights it's now basically domestic tourism so within the Mara a few of our partners have opened up um, and this is a fantastic thing because it is obviously giving employment to uh, uh, the local community but you know what with COVID it changes every day sadly um, so we are basically just waiting for our government to be in a, a position that they know that all of uh, the Kenyans are safe and um, they have the right precautions, I mean, the right measures in, in place. Mm -hmm. So I would love to give you an answer. We know. We, can't. we do yeah. have, as we do have newsletters that go out as whenever there are updates um, for all four regions. So uh, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. Um, look, 
uh, I would give my left leg to be in the Marseille Mara right now, but sadly I can't. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, the suppliers aren't. Uh, um, no, it's tourism is not a, a big thing right now, sadly. Yeah, and of course, uh, you guys do a really great job um, sending out emails and updates and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, if any of you are interested in get joining the um, Killing Peacock newsletters, uh, newsletter mailings, um, I'm happy to put you on that list. Um, I think this is a really great question because um, I always love to travel in the low season. Um, yep. So we know the migration is a high season highlight, but are there any underrated events, sightings um, in low season that we should know about? Um, I'm going to just put my spin on it. Kath, of course, you can answer, but I always love going in rain, uh, low season just because um, obviously there isn't as many vehicles, but also the game doesn't go anywhere. There's still residents of the area. It's just that you're not seeing these massive herds and uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of um, zebra and wildebeest, but you know, the, the, the resident game, you know, still call it home. So I just think that's an, interesting. And if you want to touch on that too, Kath. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the migration is fantastic, but um, it, uh, weirdly throughout Kenya, the rainy season, we call it the rainy season, but um, it's always warm. So it's not like, freezing <laughs> and then it rains sort of in the afternoon or in the early morning and for photographers it is the most stunning scenery so when the rain falls it clears up all the dust in the air so everything gets very very clear and everything is much more bright um it's absolutely beautiful and very calm and a quiet time um so you're with the wilderness you're in you're with the wildlife and it's it's like a very tranquil, quiet experience. It's I, I much prefer the low season. I do too. Um, and of course, the migration is a bucket list item, but you know, pick your poison. Um, okay, <laughs> I promise this will be the last one. Kath, you're going to have a heyday. This is the oh most. Oh my gosh, no, I'm fine gonna... with questions forever. As long as anyone keeps, it stays on. I'm good. Yeah, well, this will be our last one. And again, if I didn't get to your question, Kath um, does type these up, so you will receive the answer. Um, so Karen, I'm calling you out. She wants to know um, flights from the Mara to Kigali. Are there any options for the Mara to Kigali? Do you know? Uh, not that I know of, but I can definitely do some research for you. I mean, in the 2021 contracting that I've done so far, no, not direct. Mm -hmm. um, but I can definitely take a look and get to that that question if you'd like. Yes, that'd be cool. Um, We've taken up 40 minutes. I never like to go over 10, but you guys, this is awesome. Thanks so much for paying attention and, and really diving deep into the Mara with us. Um, the next few webinars that Kath is doing for us is on um, or are on Tanzania's Southern and Northern Circuit. And then we're also doing a special webinar next week um, on private safaris. So of course you've heard the term private safaris, private safaris, but the future of safaris is private just with this pandemic and COVID and stuff like that. So we really wanna dig in and show you um, what Kelly and Peacock can do for you post COVID and um, you know, make sure that something's very exclusive for, for your guests that are maybe a little hesitant to travel um, in a larger group, if you will. So uh, we're gonna have Kath talk about that. So head over to the Emerging Destinations homepage on our webinars tab. You can sign up for all of those webinars that we'll be doing within the coming weeks. So um, Kath, thanks so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. I know it's, well, it's not too late. It's not too bad It's there. really not late at all. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, uh, thanks so much for sticking around. Really appreciate it. We hope to see um, you guys again in the near future on some webinars. And uh, thanks so much for tagging along. Thanks, Kath. Thanks, everyone.